Hey there guys! Today I'm doing an impressions video on Fear the Wolves from Vostok Games. It's a battle royale first person shooter set in a post apocalyptic Chernobyl and it gives off some stalker vibes. It's very stalker inspired in that sort of way. It recently left early access on Steam and I was provided a code for this during its beta period. So I'm going to talk about the game a little bit and then I'll talk about what I like and don't like about the game. So, Fear the Wolves is a battle royale game, and while it has similar elements to a lot of other BR games, such as the looting aspect and fighting to be the last man standing, etc, all the usual things you see in, in other battle royale games, this one has a lot of unique elements, a lot of which I don't think are in any other BR title. In this game there's stuff like anomalies, there's PvE elements, there is a big map which has different areas of it cropped off for each round so you don't just play the same standard map each time you're playing different sectors of the map he also doesn't do the usual thing of dropping from a plane or some sort of vehicle in this you select a point to spawn at and that's where you spawn it's kind of similar more towards what counter strike is doing with its battle royale mode where you can pick a location and spawn there the wolves which are part of the pve element and the name of the game they can reveal your position and they can also hunt you down and kill you if you're not careful. But it can also be used as a weapon, in a way, through either leading them into other people or getting the heart of the matriarch, which is a white wolf, which is kind of like the leader in a way of the wolves. And this adds a pretty fun element to the game, having to think about how noisy you're being or looking out for wolves as well as other players. There is a good variety of guns, attachments and consumables as well as artifacts you can find on the map that will give you boosts in certain ways. And the guns handle pretty decently, they're not often too special but it's more of a fair system where all the guns don't have a pattern that you have to learn or it's not got random gunfire, it's all based on recoil control pretty much. Right, so I want to talk about some of the things I enjoy about the game now. So, first off, I like that the game has radiation zones and anomaly areas. This is very similar to Stalker. There is um, areas where it's just full of radiation, but there's a lot more loot to get. Uh, these areas are a lot more dangerous though and you require getting hazmat gear and um, oxygen tanks so you can actually survive in those areas, as well as anything anti-radiation. And there's also anomalies which are pretty hard to see, especially when the weather affects your visibility with rain or fog. It can be very hard to see them. So sometimes you'll just run into them accidentally and take damage. But it's cool to see them in the game. You can avoid these with your Geiger counter, and that will sort of hint at where they are. But they can cause trouble. And these are always randomised on the map, these areas, each time you play. And more of these areas spread across the map when the map is closing in for the final area. I like the unpredictability as well of where the final area is going to be. In this game you have dangerous levels of radiation. And it fills up squares of the map rather than just being a circle. And these radiation areas can actually just appear anywhere. Now it doesn't do it completely randomly to the point where you will get trapped in a square away from the final area. It does it logically. And it'll make sort of like corridors in a way on the map where you can go through and still survive and make it to the final areas of the map. This also brings an infection with it if you are in a area that's just becoming an irradiated area. You will get this infection which will start damaging you if you are not sprinting. I just like the unpredictability of all this though. These areas fill up with anomalies and usually are patrolled by wolves on the edges of them. So it can get pretty chaotic if you're trying to run away from the radiation. I do like the PvE elements in the game. It can cause a bit of extra chaos when you're like in a PvP fight. Having some wolves come in and get into the action while you're fighting other players is pretty fun and chaotic at the same time. I do kind of hope that they expand upon the PvE elements though. What I'd like to see is they make some more mutants to add to the game that you can run into that can attack you, but they don't do much damage maybe, they just can be an annoyance. And make it so the wolves are like the most dangerous mutants you run into. So it still keeps in with the theme of the game, but you run into other things as well. And I think that'd expand the game quite a bit. I enjoy the weather system on the game as well. It's nice to have some varied weather and times of day as well. You can be playing in the morning, in the afternoon or at dusk. And the weather is quite varied. You can get stormy weather, um, foggy weather, very hot weather. 
And all these things bring different status effects with them, like when it's storming, your visibility gets lower, and vehicles become harder to handle from like the rain. There's also windy weather, for example, which will make it so longer range shots are less accurate because of the wind, and you'll also move a little bit slower because the wind's blowing against you. If you stay around in spectator mode, you can vote for whatever weather comes next, and that can mess up some people in the final areas. Now, I really like the environment for the game. The team has put together a pretty cool map to explore. It's got a lot of different areas to check out for loot, such as small villages, swamps and camps. And you can find abandoned power stations, radar stations, beach ships and military bases all over the map too. There's um, a lot of other landmarks as well that you can come across. Now, I've not seen everywhere on the map, but I wish I could explore it more because it's there's just some interesting areas to look at and check out. I was kind of surprised actually at the landmarks and locations they created, like there's this old dam that they've got on the map which is barely holding together, it's just got like shipping containers between big gaps on the dam. And there's this other area as well, I can't remember the name of it, which has got this camp built into this ship that's been split in half, but it, both sides of it are stood up vertically and the camp is built onto these different levels of the ship. It's very interesting. I kind of wish I could just check out these places in a single player mode almost. And one of the last things I want to mention that I enjoyed about the game is the end game, which is known as the evacuation on this game. During the evacuation, a helicopter will fly into the map, so one of the two or three areas that are safe on the map at the moment, and it will hover over a certain spot for about 90 seconds. After those 90 seconds, it will drop a load of red smoke to signal where the evacuation is and to cover up people's approach to it. Now with the evacuation, you can win by actually getting on board the helicopter by its um, rope that is dangling and getting pulled up to the helicopter, which will instantly win you the game if the helicopter pulls you up fast enough. When you're on the rope, you can use anything in your inventory, plus you can fire off of the rope to defend yourself which you're going to need to if there's several players still alive. And of course you can still win the game by killing everybody. The ending can be very tense. You don't know where people are and radiation starts creeping in as well into the area until somebody finally wins. And this is where having the oxygen tanks and hazmat gear come in handy if you've got any of those at this point. I've seen people hiding in smoke or hiding in hills far away from the extraction trying to pick people off. But I do like being able to win the game without having to get into the fight at the end. So, now I want to talk about some of the things I don't like about the game so much. There's some weird optimization issues in certain areas, particularly really busy areas where there's a lot of buildings and objects. I've only had this in one specific area, and it would just give me a lower frame rate in this area. Um, generally the game runs at 60 FPS for me, but in one or two areas, it can just drop my frame rate quite a bit. And I think that's just like a combination of all the objects in certain areas. And speaking of optimization, occasionally I'll get these freezers as well, which will just cause problems. Luckily, I've not run into any issues where I've run into a player during these situations or um, being killed by a wolf, but it is still pretty annoying when it happens. Another thing is the current wolf AI. I think there's something wrong with the wolf AI when you have got the the heart of the matriarch. When you have this artifact, regular wolves aren't supposed to attack you anymore unless you attack them first. And I've found every single time I've used this that I still get attacked by regular wolves, um, but I can call other wolves to attack other players, which then attack me afterwards. So the wolf AI needs some improvement. There is a lack of text chat as well in the game. So if you're playing duos with a random person and they aren't using a microphone, you have no way to communicate really. You sort of just have to follow them around and hope that they know what they're doing. No, UI is a little bit plain and minimalistic, but um, I think it would look a little bit better if it popped out a bit more. Maybe if it had some shadows on the icons or if it had another color or something mixed in. Especially when you're looking at all the different loot you've got, sometimes it's not immediately obvious what you've got and what you haven't got. Like, you can sometimes accidentally trade out things like um, better armor for worse armor without even noticing. So just some small improvements to your UI like that could go a long way. 
and unfortunately, the game has a pretty low player count, so getting into some fuller games is a bit more difficult. Unless you play on the European servers. Um, the North American ones, which are my local servers actually, because I live in America, they can be quite laggy at times, I don't really know why. But the European ones are fine, generally. Luckily the dev team has made it so that you can vote to start a match while in the pre-game, if there are less players than needed. So you can get games going as long as the majority of players there agree to start the match early. The low play count can be down to a number of things. So, those are my impressions on Fear the Wolves. I ended up enjoying my time with the game. I look forward to seeing what they do to expand upon the game though and improve it. I'd like to see what content they're planning for the game and also the updates and optimization they can provide. I'd also like to see some more players get attracted to the game because I think it's got the potential to be a pretty solid title in the battle royale genre with its unique elements. Right, that's it guys. Now I'm going to leave you with some footage of one of the times I won the game. Hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you next time.